Welcome back design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to put the glowing effect on the blade of your lightsaber. So let's get started. So as you can see here I've hidden my uh, lightsaber object that I had before. So we're going to have to create a mesh object and I'm not going to work in Arnold. I'm going to turn Arnold off and we need a cylinder. So create a cylinder. Move it into place. Turn on snapping for your rotate tool and rotate the cylinder 90 degrees. And then move it up into place. Scale it if you have to. Mine appears to be just about right. Well, I think I'm going to scale this a little bit in these two axes to make it thinner. Okay, instead of trying to scale it uh, to make it the right length, I'm just going to switch to vertex mode and grab these end vertices and pull it out and make it the length I want. And now to make round the end off so it's not so flat, I'm going to bevel that edge around the top. like so. Now you may notice that I don't have any materials on my lightsaber. That's because I have my material override turned on turned on here. You can turn that on or off in your viewport toolbar or your panel toolbar and what that does is that puts the default Lambert material back on all the objects in the viewport. So it's useful when you're working with Arnold materials. So the next thing we need here, I'm going to switch to object mode, the next thing we need is a material for the saber. So right click on the object, assign new material, and you're going to make it an Arnold AI standard surface material. And for the color, click and make sure that it's white. And then we're going to scroll down and find the emission setting open it up, click that color swatch and make sure it's white and then we're going to drag the emission weight all the way up and this will not need any roughness or not need any uh, reflectivity or specular effects so we can dial those down and turn them off. Now with emission here this material will cast light but not very much so what we need to do now is turn this saber mesh into a light. So to do that, we're going to go to Arnold, Light, Mesh Light. And that turns our mesh into a light. Now if we turn on Arnold in the viewport, you probably won't see much but we're going to need to dial up the exposure for this light and you'll begin to see some light. Let's make it like 10 and then make the intensity like 10 and you'll begin to see that it does in fact cast some light. Now this is where you get to choose the color of your lightsaber. We're going to make this a cyan color. You're not going to see it until you turn on Arnold. Now the other thing you might notice is if you deselect your mesh that it's not visible anymore. It's because we turned it into a light. Now your mesh is now in a group and if you open that group you'll see the light in there. It's right here. To access the light settings you click on them. To bring the mesh back, what we need to do is check this box in the light settings. And then we also need to check light visible. And now when we deselect the mesh, you'll see that we have a glowing saber. But there are a couple things we need to do to make this look much, much better. 
I'm going to turn off Arnold and I'm going to open the Arnold render view. Now this thing is putting out light and it is looking very um, glowy but it doesn't have that sort of aura that lightsabers have so we're going to fix that. To fix that we're going to go to the render settings and we're going to go to the Arnold renderer tab right here and we're going to go to imagers. We're going to open that up. Now this settings, these settings can also be accessed right here in this little gear in the Arnold render view. This just goes straight to the imager settings. So what you're going to do is click here and you're going to add a lens effect. And that brings up some settings. The settings that we're interested in are the bloom settings. So the first one we're going to try to play with is the strength. And you can see right there that, that gives our saber a nice glow. You may not need much. But the stronger it is, the more you have that white hot center effect there. You can also change the radius, and the radius is going to make your glow tighter around the blade or not. And then you can play with the threshold, and the threshold has to do with how widely the light is cast around the scene. And that has a, a little bit of, a little bit does a lot there. So you play around with these settings and get the look you want. And in playing with this, it's useful to use this little camera icon down here in the lower right hand corner. You can take a picture of your current render. And then you can change the settings. And then you can take another picture. And then you can compare the two to see, what, see the change. Now because I have this selected, that's what I'm looking at. If I change the settings, notice how nothing is changing. That's because I have to come down here and turn this uh, snapshot thing off. Then I can see the lab update. You can also give this uh, bloom effect a tint, which sometimes has a very interesting effect. Play around with that color. And then one final thing we need to do before we save our image is uh, notice all this speckly noise in these shadows here. We need to fix that. And to fix that, we need to go to the render settings, go to the Arnold tab, and we need to up the diffuse samples, possibly as much as six. And then I also like to increase this one one. And that increases the quality of our render greatly, but it also increases our render time. So I'm going to come back when this is done. Okay, we're back. That took uh, considerably longer to render, but I'm going to compare these two by looking at previous uh, before changing the quality settings and then afterwards, and you can see a significant difference. So the final thing we need to do is bring back up the render settings again. Go to the common tab. Make sure that the out file output is JPEG or PNG, either one is fine, and then make sure that the image size preset is changed from the default of 520 to 720, I mean 540 to 720, and once you've done that, it may render again and you're just going to have to wait, but once you've done that, then you can save the image and name it, save it wherever you want, and then you can upload it to ArtStation and turn in this assignment as completed. I hope you enjoyed this project and I'll see you in the next video.